Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial here on the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at the typing library or more specifically we're going to be taking a look at the union keyword in the typing library. Now the union keyword is, is a special keyword that's used in the type hinting concept. Okay, it's basically used to combine together two or more types. Okay, two or more possible types. Now if you're a complete beginner to type hinting and you don't know what this is, then I really advise you to stop right here and go check out our typing library tutorial instead. Okay, because that's a complete tutorial on the, on the type hinting concept. It explains what type hinting is, okay, and it, it explains the typing library and explains everything about static type checkers and everything, okay. If there's something you don't understand here, go check out that video. Okay, otherwise I will be giving a brief explanation and background of what I'm doing here anyway, okay. So without further ado, let's begin and let me demonstrate what exactly union is. Okay, so basically the type hinting concept. The type hinting concept was introduced in Python 3.5 and it was kind of meant for developers to make debugging and testing easier to write cleaner and more understandable code or not necessarily cleaner code, but more documented code. Okay, so basically normally what I would do is create a variable like this. Okay, this assigns the value five to my var. But if I also do this, this is legal. Okay, I just reassigned that same variable uh, to a string. I gave it an integer, then I gave it a string. And this is perfectly fine. But this can cause problems, which is why we have type hinting, okay, which we can declare like this. This is now the ID. We just told the ID that we're using that this is an integer. Okay, but this by itself will not cause any errors if, for example, I try assigning it a string. Okay, now you might think that this might, you know, this might cause an error, but it won't. As you can see, it just ran without any errors. Okay, so what do we do to fix this? Or actually, there's nothing to fix really because type hinting is not something that converts Python from a dynamically typed type language to a static one. Rather, it just, you know, hints. It just hints at the fact that this is an integer. Okay, and that it only accepts integers. Now, if we use, for example, let me, let me just navigate to my current folder. And if I use the static type checker that I've installed, okay, this is just done by pip install in my py, by the way. So if I do this and I use this Python command, this Python format, then the name of my file, which is union typing.py. Now, if I run this, then you'll notice that it gives an error, okay? It says incompatible types. Okay, now this is all the intro. Okay, I was just explaining what it was and uh, I'll just, I just showed you this static type checker so you don't freak out when I use it later. Okay, so if you're using a ID like PyCharm, by the way, you don't need to do this because PyCharm's default ID, okay, what it does, it al already accounts for type hinting. Okay, and it'll take action accordingly. So that's a pretty handy feature in PyCharm. Anyways, so without further ado, let's get to the point of a union, okay? What union is. Now, what I just did was create a variable of, si of type integer. Now, what if, what if I want to make this variable of multiple types? Well, that's where I'm gonna use union, okay? Not all types, okay? But some types, more than one. So this is the format. Actually, sorry, it's not string, it's, it's just str, all right? So this, this format should now work. If I run the same code again, okay, this should not give me an error because now both integers and strings are allowed. And you, you know what, let's just, let's just uh, reassign this here, okay, to an int. And let's just run this code now. All right, see, it says no issues found. That's great. Now this means that it's accepting both string values and it's, it's accepting integer values as well. Okay, so that's what union is. 
And honestly, this is all you really need, need to know. And let me just show you some more examples. Okay, what you can do is put in anything in here. Okay, you can put in floats, you can put in bulls. Okay, but obviously you wouldn't want to put that, otherwise you're just ruining the purpose of type hinting. Okay, only put what's necessary. Okay, and avoid using union, I think, because uh, again, because the more you use union, the more you kind of ruin the point of type hinting. But sometimes it can be a necessity, you know, so, you know. All right, so let's just take a look at one more example. I'll create something with the list keyword over here. Okay, so let me create something called my list. Okay, this can be a list of integers. Okay, but because of union, or if I add union anyway, this can also become a string of integers as well. Sorry, a, a list of strings, yeah. It can become a list of strings as well. So the following command will also be perfectly legal. All right, see? There isn't any limit, by the way, to the number of commands that you can combine in here, okay? But again, just take caution. So this is basically union. There wasn't really much to it. Understanding the concept behind type hinting is much more important and can lead, easily lead you astray if you aren't careful. So I do hope you guys understood type hinting over here and hopefully I taught you guys something new today, okay? If you liked the video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe to the channel, okay? Make sure to leave some feedback. Let me know what you're interested in and what you might want to see, okay? And if you have any suggestions, I'm always open to hear them, all right? See you guys in a later video.